Well, we are looking at the possibility of OJ soon becoming a free man. Of course, he served almost nine years for a robbery right here in Las Vegas. And ABC's Deborah Roberts joins me right now. She's been covering OJ's possible parole for 2020. Deborah, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, now, you spoke with people nice who were here. with uh, OJ at the time of the robbery. Uh, what are they making of the possibility of him getting out on parole? Well, this is something that these men who were with OJ that night will never forget, obviously. Many of them have paid dearly for their association with OJ Simpson. Some of them were golfing buddies, uh, uh, business acquaintances, and they take, they take us through the steps of what happened that night. We came back to Las Vegas to the Palace Station Hotel and met with Michael McClinton, one of the men who was with OJ that night, who's licensed to carry a gun and had a gun that night. He said he was shaking as he walked into the hotel because even 10 Ten years later, it is still something that is very hard for him to deal with. They talked to us about what they expected to happen that night, about how OJ convinced them to go along with this plan. One of them talks to us about walking in and, and, and brandishing a gun and realizing at that moment, this is probably a robbery. We're probably going to go to jail. But nobody expected that that night. We also talked to them about what they think of OJ today. Do they speak with him? They tell us their feelings about him and whether they think he should be paroled. And even those who are not that fond of OJ Simpson because what has happened to them, most of them seem to think that OJ Simpson deserves parole. After nine and a half years, they all seem to think that this was overcharge and that if this were anybody else, chances are he would be paroled. We speak with legal experts who talk to us about that. What are the chances that he might be paroled? And we also talk about O.J.'s life behind bars at Lovelock Prison. What is it like for him? Uh, we speak with one of his friends who's visited with him over the last few years, who's come along with Arnell and some of the family members, O.J.'s daughter, Arnell. Uh, we take you inside that prison, essentially, and tell you what life is like and what O.J.'s deepest concerns and hopes are. It is a fascinating look at this case that so many people thought they knew about, but maybe didn't know the details of what happened in Las Vegas. And I have to say, and I can't resist it, this time what happened in Vegas, of course, didn't stay in Vegas because yeah. everybody is talking about it. Right, and I'm curious about that uh, that day of the robbery there of the sports memorabilia. Did his friends indicate this is something, something that they thought he perhaps had planned out or is this sort of a sort of a spontaneous sort of reaction that he did on the fly? What was fascinating is that OJ's friends were all under the impression that he was going to this hotel, to the Palace Station Hotel, to retrieve some of his memorabilia, a lot of it personal memorabilia, because he felt it had been taken from him illegally. Nobody seemed to think that they were going to that hotel to commit a robbery. They thought they were going to help a friend. And you'll hear from them about how disorganized it became and how this thing sort of took on a life of its own once they got there and how suddenly they realized they were in deep trouble. You have to remember, many of these folks had come to town for a wedding. They weren't in Vegas just to party and hang out. Uh, O.J. was best man at his friend's wedding. And suddenly, they get embroiled in a robbery that winds up sending O.J. to prison and creating uh, a, a havoc for the rest of these guys for the, a few years afterwards. And I understand you have some insight here about what his life has been like in prison. I'm curious, uh, what do you have about that? And as far as they say, his friend saying uh, he should be eligible for parole, what makes them say that? We talked to a former prison guard from the Lovelock prison, and we also speak with one of O.J.'s friends about what life is like. They describe um, uh, O.J.'s demeanor and the fact that he's, they say he's a leader in the prison. They tell us about some of the jobs that he's doing. You'll also hear from O.J. Simpson himself because uh, he was uh, recorded during his last parole hearing four years ago. Many people don't realize that O.J. Simpson has already been partially paroled. He was four years ago, and now he's coming up for the rest of those charges. And if were anybody else, it might be a non-event. The legal experts tell us that O.J. Simpson has had a clean life in prison. Um, he has had no issues. He's been a model prisoner, and he is the, the kind of inmate who ordinarily probably would be paroled. His friends also seem to think that after nine and a half years, given the crime and given that O.J. did not carry a gun into that hotel room, that perhaps he should be paroled. But they also talk to us about what they think his life might be Afterwards, should he be paroled? And we get into that, what their feelings are, and also 
Would they want to visit with him? Would they want to talk to him? And what might they say to him should they talk to him? Uh, his friends are all conflicted. They have various views about this man who they thought of as a friend and now maybe not necessarily uh, in those same terms. So you'll hear from them tonight the real details about what happened in Las Vegas almost 10 years ago. I'm curious, is there any indication how Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman's uh, families uh, both feel about the possibility of, of OJ getting out? The Goldman family, Ron Goldman's family, has spoken out uh, previously about OJ being paroled. And as you can imagine, they are not happy at all about that. And we do actually include uh, information about the Goldmans in our hour tonight. Um, there are a number of people who uh, feel that O.J. Simpson um, was connected in some way or might be responsible for that murder in California, those murders, even though he was, um, he was exonerated. The Goldmans are not happy. They probably will make their voices known because next week during that hearing, O.J. will be able to have um, a, a sympathizer or a friend to speak, and there may be somebody else from the other uh, uh, voice who might be able to speak, whether that will be the Goldmans, whether they will follow that closely. Um, we don't know for sure, but one way or another, we know that this trial, this hearing, one way or another, we know this hearing will be followed very closely next week. And uh, O.J. Simpson, along with the rest of the world, will find out, will he be a free man or will he continue to sit behind bars for a few more years? And for people who support O.J., do they feel like or at least fear that uh, the previous um, trial uh, when he was acquitted there for the murders of Ron Goldman and Nicole Simpson will somehow still be playing a factor? One of O.J. Simpson's dearest friends, Dr. Henry Johnson, reflects the view of some other people who seem to feel that maybe O.J. Simpson right now is not just paying a penalty for what happened in that Las Vegas hotel room. Some of them feel that he's also basically paying for what he didn't get, which is prison time for those murders in California, which of course we know he was acquitted of. Many people seem to feel that this is what this is all about, that it was payback. The judge in that case, of course, in Nevada absolutely denied that. But there are people who speculate that his prison sentence might not have been as intense had he been anybody else. Um, but his friends also, too, feel that maybe O.J. did deserve some punishment. You know, he did walk into this hotel room. He did take something in a way that uh, by Nevada law was robbery. And, and they also hit him with kidnapping and assault charges. They all seem to feel that O.J. did need to pay a price. But many of them feel he has paid the price for what happened in Las Vegas and that enough is enough. And can you take us through as best you can, uh, Deborah, about what happens after this hearing either way? Uh, if he is denied, when is the next time he can possibly uh, be up for parole? And uh, if he is granted parole, what, what happens? What's the time frame there? If O.J. Simpson is granted parole, he will not be released right away. He would probably not be released until October, sometime in the fall. If he is denied parole, uh, there are any number of scenarios. It could be that he's just flat out denied and it might be four more years before he can apply again. There is a possibility there could be a tie because there are only six commissioners who are looking at this. One of them somehow is not involved in the case or not eligible to be involved in the case. If that is the case, then it could be a matter of a few more months before he can actually appeal again. And then the big question is, what happens if he is uh, freed? Uh, what happens to him in the fall? One of his friends tells us that he has options, that he has friends, that he could wind up in Texas or California or possibly uh, in Las Vegas, that there are friends who are willing to try to help him uh, restart his life and rehabilitate himself. So that will be the big question if he is indeed released. Where does he go? What does he do? But there's no question that one way or another that the adulation and the fame and the interest will somehow still follow O.J. Simpson because it continues to even when he is behind bars. And I'm curious, I'm sure you've been following O.J. Simpson's career and obviously everything that has happened uh, since he's left the game of football, his life in broadcasting, his work in commercials, then of course uh, his, uh, his trial uh, of the century that he was involved in and now the arrest and his conviction concerning this uh, armed robbery here in Las Vegas. And just some of your thoughts about O.J., the man and, and the life and especially the life that he has had over the past 20, 25 years or so. 
What makes this case so fascinating is that you think about the life of O.J. Simpson. This is a man who was an extraordinary athlete. He was one of the first black pitchmen in America and enjoyed extraordinary success and fame and adulation. And even after the murder trial of the century, where many people still believe that he was somehow involved in the murders of his wife and her friend Ron Goldman, he still continued to enjoy some attention and some fame. And we hear from his friends about what that has been like, that O.J. was still in this bubble even after that trial. And they talked to us about the fact that when they met him, they met him on the golf course, some of them, and that even though they may have had questions about O.J. and whether he could have possibly been involved in a murder, they still were attracted to him. They still wanted to be a part of his life. He still was the guy in the room that everybody wanted to be attracted to. That magnetism still remains with O.J. Simpson. And we hear that it even still exists even in prison, that uh, O.J. Simpson gets, uh, some might say, a bit of preferential treatment. He's the first one in the line if there's a medical line or he, uh, he coaches sports when he's uh, in prison. He's considered a leader in the prison that uh, some of the guys come to him. He sort of settles uh, minor disputes. Um, O.J. Simpson still somehow retains that aura and certainly that fascination all these years later. There's never been anybody like him, of course, in the world of sports and entertainment and in terms of somebody who could just sort of accrue so much in, in, in that amount of time. And I think that's what makes his story so fascinating. So many people want to know what makes this guy tick. And you'll hear from his friends tonight about what they think makes him tick, flaws and all. All right, we'll leave it right there. Deborah Roberts, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right, 2020 airs tonight right here on Channel 13 at 10 o'clock.